There are few things here in objectivity that get us more excited than old wooden boxes full of shiny treasures. And Keith has outdone himself today. Okay, here we go. Oh, that is heavy. I'm not gonna lie, Keith, I am a little bit excited. You know I've wanted to look at this for a long time. What is this? Uh, this is the library's metals cabinet. There we go, should be nice and easy. Oh, that's so nice. Look at that, that's a cute little key. All right, there we go. Oh my goodness. Oh, I could not be more excited. Look at all those numbered drawers. The shame about it is it is so full and heavy of, of metals that it's actually beginning to crack along the lines of the lifting handles and across the top of the oh object dear. just because it's so full of, of gold and, and other valuables. Where do we start? I think my head's going to explode. Uh, number one. <laughs> <laughs> start at the top? Yeah, do. Oh my goodness. Look at that. The Copley Medal, that's one of the most famous medals you can get with from the Royal Society, isn't it? It's the earliest award for science, so it's a very famous one. So apart from the Copley Medal, we have the Davy Medal, that's Sir Humphrey Davy, and we have a Royal Medal, which is awarded with the face of the monarch on it. As we go through the drawers, you'll see that not all of them are Royal Society medals, so other people have sent the organisation their own medals, so we might come across one or two that have been awarded, but quite often they're, they're blanks, they're specimens. So you see what happens is here, these slide off. Oh, now you tell us. <laughs> and each one of the medals can be taken out in its own special little wooden case. There's the famous, famous Copley Medal, the oldest science medal awarded. So if you keep your finger on that, yeah. and then just turn it over. Turn it around, and there's see. the other side. The other side, which is the... The arms. Usually you'll find that uh, blanks like this are in slightly less expensive metals, metals, so you won't get gold ones in here too often. There'll be specimens, so there'll be bronze examples. So this looks like it was a medal for mathematics. Yep. Well, come on, Keith, if we're going to get through all these drawers, we'd yep. better crack on. Oh, look at this. Some unusually shaped medals here. Mm -hmm. This one's from the French Academy here. That's right. So this one is, is Bertolet. Sometimes they would simply produce decorative plaques in commemoration of particular scientists. But in some cases, these are awards for particular things. That looks like there's a, a balloon on that one. What is it? It says the Astronomical Society of the Pacific. Oh, I think it's a comet. Aha, uh -huh. yes, that would make sense. It's a comet it? going yes. through the sky. We can see the back of this one. It says here, this medal, founded by etc, etc, is presented to blank, so this one hasn't been presented yet, yeah. in commemoration of the discovery of a comet on blank. So this was obviously their generic medal that they would give to people when they found comets. There's no name on there, so all you have to do is to discover a comet and we can get it engraved up for you. Not today. A bit bright. <laughs> <laughs> and here's uh, another astronomical one. This is the Royal Astronomical Society. It's a medal, and you can see here on the back is a very famous telescope. That's a William Herschel one, I think. You know I'm hoping for like a Nobel Prize or something in here, don't you? We're just skimming through these drawers now, looking for ones that catch our eye. Oh, look at that. There's a nice assortment there. I can imagine sort of coin and medal collectors would get very, very excited about this. There's one for Euler, one of the most famous mathematicians of them all. Very small. Zurich 1932. So it looks like this was from some kind of mathematical congress that was held. Yeah, doesn't quite suit my t-shirt, does it? So we're getting to the end of the, the formally collected ones here now. So a lot of these are, are just loose in their boxes. This is Frederick Tiedemann. So here we go, here's draw 16. Benjamin Franklin, 1706 to 1790, printer, philosopher, scientist, statesman, diplomatist. And there's the back. This was struck by an act of the Congress of the United States to commemorate the 200th anniversary of the birth of Benjamin Franklin. And sent to the Royal Society as a, as a gift. And now stored in yeah. drawer 16. So William Crookes is a nice one. So this is just a, uh, a decorative piece with a very, very nice profile of Crookes there. But if you turn it over, original label in this case, which says modelled by Miss E. A. C. Bauer, exhibited in Royal Academy, 1908. There is the medal cabinet. And I didn't get my Nobel Prize, but I got some pretty impressive medals. Shall we put these back? Mm -hmm. All right, I'll, I can do this. Just packing up my medals. 
Nice one. Well locked up. You have to open it again though, because we've uh, got an extra one here. What have you got? Well, I'd hate you not to see one oh, of these. Ah, that's a Nobel Prize. You've pulled that one out of the bag. That's Sir John Cornforth's Nobel. Sir John Cornforth? Cornforth, yeah, he's a fellow of the society. It's a gold one, so you can probably feel that. It's pretty weighty. It is weighty. Holding a Nobel Prize medal is always something very special. So we look on the back here, it's got his name engraved. Mm -hmm. And what's that, 1965? Mm -hmm. What area did he win the Nobel Prize for, Keith? Oh, it was for chemistry. Okay. Well, Keith, you delivered the goods. You gave me a whole case of medals. And then when I had a little bit of a complaint and said I didn't get a Nobel Prize, he pulls that rabbit out of the hat. Copley medal, Copley medal. That's most important, surely. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think you're a bit biased. <laughs> They had two dishes of skate and soles. They had rabbits and onions, very popular. Calves head, bacon and greens. And the hind quarter of a house lamb. Venison pie, goose roast, chump of beef, shoulder of lamb, cherry and currant pie, apple pie, butter and cheese to follow. That is quite a meal. That is quite a, this is the 18th century, of course. And if you see any of our portraits around the building, they're quite well padded, the gentlemen of the spirit.